Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. I thought we'd uh, end this discussion on relativistic kinematics by just coming back to a topic that uh, we considered during the first week of the semester, and that topic is Compton scattering. So you might recall in Compton scattering, uh, you have an incident high energy photon that goes into a target. That high energy photon interacts with an electron inside the target. The electron is scattered and, uh, uh, and the photon is also scattered and the photon is scattered through an angle theta, which is measured with respect to the incident uh, photon. Um, now, historically, this was a very important experiment because uh, it proved that these uh, photons uh, had to be treated as particles, right? That was Compton's claim to fame. He was able to show that by analyzing this process, this, this view or this picture of electromagnetic radiation as being comprised of photons was in fact a valid picture and, and it was uh, uh, his experiment and the agreement between his data and the theoretical uh, uh, model that convinced a lot of skeptics that this, this concept of a photon was for real. So uh, originally we discussed this lecture in uh, uh, lecture 1.06. Uh, we wrote down the formula that Compton derived, but we did not have the background to actually derive that formula. Uh, but now that we've discussed relativistic kinematics in the last lecture, we're in a position to come back and reconsider this problem and uh, use the relativistic formulas to conserve energy and momentum and, uh, and actually derive Compton's, uh, Compton's famous equation. And then we're going to use that equation just to do some simple evaluations, just to give you a sense that once you've got his equation, you can use it in a, a variety of different ways to understand in some detail uh, what, this, what this process is all about. So uh, what's the premise of the calculation? The premise of the calculation is uh, that for massless photons, uh, the momentum, the magnitude of the momentum is equal to the energy E of the photon divided by the speed of light. And the energy E is, of course, uh, uh, Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon. And, of course, the frequency of the photon can be written in terms of the, the wavelength lambda. So you've got this type of an expression. Any one of these terms can be used uh, to um, calculate the momentum of the incident photon. Uh, the electron that recoils inside the target, we're going to treat that electron recoil as a relativistic uh, uh, quantity. So we have to use the relativistic definition of momentum that we derived in the previous lecture. So that's the, uh, uh, the requirement to get Compton's formula um, uh, in, uh, uh, worked out. Um, so the next couple of slides are just... Uh, a lot of algebra, and um, I won't go through all the details, but I will mention that we, we start with two equations. One is a conservation of energy equation. The other is a conservation of momentum equation. So the conservation of energy equation says that the incident photon energy, HF sub I, plus the rest mass energy of the electron, M, MC squared, is equal to the final uh, electron, uh, uh, final photon energy, H times the frequency, uh, F sub F, uh, plus the, uh, the uh, total energy of the recoiling electron, uh, which now has to be written as the square root of P squared C squared plus M squared C to the fourth. So this is the relativistic term that has to be included. The conservation of momentum result is pretty straightforward. It just says the momentum of the incident photon in the uh, x and y direction, so this is a vector equation, has got to be equal to the momentum of the uh, exiting photon. Again, the x and the y components have to be split out, uh, and you have to include the momentum carried away by the uh, uh, electron after it interacts with the photon. Now, of course, classically, the expectation was uh, that the incident photon energy and the accident photon energy were, were identical. So uh, classically, everyone expected this to be a, 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 a 
zero energy loss proposition. The photon in and the photon out had exactly the same energies. Uh, what Compton was able to show, of course, was that was not true. Uh, you actually had to take into account the relativistic uh, energy carried away by this, uh, this electron. So um, the derivation proceeds by uh, calculating the uh, momentum of the uh, uh, electron after a collision, and uh, that follows from equation two. Uh, when you take this vector dot product, that's how the angle theta is introduced into the problem. So that scattering angle theta comes out right here. It's the angle between the incident photon and the exiting photon, and that, that defines the angle theta. Um, uh, from equation three, we can get an expression for c squared p squared uh, for the electron. That's important because that term appears here. So uh, the game we're gonna play is we're gonna get two expressions for the same quantity. We're gonna set those two expressions equal to one another and we're gonna derive Compton's formula. So, uh, so from equation three, this follows. Uh, we have to uh, invoke the fact that a photon has zero mass, so the energy of the photon gets simplified because the mc squared quantity squared term drops out, and that allows us to rewrite equation uh, three uh, in, in, this, in this form right here. Uh, the next slide is just more algebra. All we're going to do, right, all we're going to do is we're going to set... Um, yeah, we're going to set two things equal to one another. This is, this is the relativistic energy of the uh, uh, electron after recoil, and this is the uh, energy calculated uh, for the electron uh, based on the energy lost uh, between the incident photon and the exiting photon. Uh, you square uh, the right-hand side of the equation. You work through some algebra. Some terms cancel out. Uh, and you're left with an expression which I call equation five. So equation five tells you uh, 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 what the quantity p squared c squared is evaluated in two different ways. Uh, uh, you set, set equation five equal to equation four. Again, more terms cancel out. And at the end of the day, you're left with an expression that says the cosine of that scattering angle is equal to this quantity uh, that's written down here. Uh, you then have to realize this combination of frequencies can be rewritten in a somewhat uh, more simpler form. So we write this uh, difference in frequencies divided by the product in frequencies. We just write that as uh, uh, the difference between the reciprocal frequencies. Uh, we then have an expression for cosine theta and then uh, once we have uh, the frequencies, so uh, we really measure wavelengths experimentally. So we just convert photon frequencies into wavelengths and uh, out comes uh, uh, Compton's famous formula, right? This term, this prefactor here that multiplies the one minus cosine theta, this prefactor is known as the Compton wavelength. And uh, I think uh, we evaluated that way back in the first week of the semester. It's about two, two and a half picometers, right? And that scales the problem. That's the, that's the factor that scales the problem for uh, photon scattering off of uh, 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 electrons. So in this calculation, it's assumed that the, uh, the initial electron is at rest, okay? Uh, that's an assumption. Yeah, we're also assuming that the scattering involves the scattering of a photon from an electron. It's uh, the, the photon does not scatter from a carbon atom or a, a proton or a neutron. It's in the nucleus of the target. It actually scatters from an electron. So that's another assumption. And of course, those assumptions are, 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 valid, are verified by the agreement of Compton's formula uh, with experimental data. And that part of part of the uh, discussion we uh, we uh, had very early on, the agreement turned out to be uh, very good between experiment and Compton's uh, theory. Uh, as an example of how you can use Compton's formula, uh, I just asked you to consider what would be the kinetic energy of a Compton scattered electron inside of a target. 
Now this is energy you can't measure because you can't go in and, 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 uh, and, and measure the change in the uh, uh, kinetic energy of an electron after it's interacted with this incident photon. Uh, so you can't measure it directly, but you can certainly calculate it, and you can calculate it based on Compton's formula. So the, the, the moral of this discussion for the next couple slides is that uh, almost any type of Compton problem is going to start from his formula. You've got to massage it or manipulate it in order to calculate the quantity uh, that's, that's of interest. And of course, that implies that you, you know that the, uh, the kinetic energy of the Compton scattered electron is going to be related to the energy loss of the photon as it interacts with the electron. So an understanding of this topic would allow you to uh, directly identify kinetic energy of, a, of an electron with a, a, an energy loss between uh, the final energy and the initial energy. Uh, of the photon that, that uh, strikes a, an electron in the target. Um, you can work it out, uh, you can solve this problem, right? The strategy is basically you want the kinetic energy of the uh, electron after scattering. We're going to set that equal to the difference in the photon energy. And once you realize that, the physics is over. You've understood the basic uh, concept of the problem. Uh, you then just have to manipulate Compton's formula in order to uh, get an expression for this energy uh, difference between the incident and the final uh, photon. So that's what I do right here. I, um, I, uh, I start to manipulate uh, Compton's formula. At this point, I, I try to switch from the wavelengths, uh, lambda sub f and lambda sub i, I convert that to energies e sub f and e sub i. The reason I do that is because I'm going to have to uh, move this equation around such that I get a quantity that, that looks like this right here. And um, uh, what I end up doing is I end up uh, with an expression down here that says that the final energy of the uh, scattered photon is equal to the initial energy of the scattered photon times this denominator which contains this cosine theta factor that describes the angle that the, the uh, photon is scattered through. And I just continue to work through that, uh, try to simplify the uh, uh, arithmetic a little bit, and at the end of the day I've got a simple formula down here which you can, you can follow through. Uh, the arithmetic on your own. It, the formula involves this parameter alpha, which is defined as the ratio of the incident photon energy to the rest mass energy of the electron. So that, that parameter alpha multipl multiplies this cosine theta factor, which describes the scattering angle. And uh, it, there's, a, there's a prefactor here that, that multiplies the incident photon energy E sub i. Um, so again, if you got uh, uh, got a few minutes, you can check my arithmetic on this and, and uh, see that uh, uh, starting from here, you can end up with this expression for the difference in the uh, in the photon energy. Uh, so um, just a few examples. Uh, I just do some calculations using that formula. Uh, the calculations are, for, are done for three different photon energies. Uh, the, the results aren't uh, terribly interesting other than a, in a qualitative sense to show you what's going on. So what I do is I consider uh, incident photons with wavelengths of 0.02 nanometers, 0.01 nanometers, and, uh, and 7.5 picometers up here. Right? The corresponding uh, energy of those incident photons is about 165 kiloelectron volts. 124 kilo electron volts and 62 kilo electron volts. And I just plot the kinetic energy of the electron in KeV versus the scattering angle. The scattering angle, of course, goes from zero to 180 degrees. And I get a characteristic curve that has this particular shape to it. So when the scattering angle is zero, uh, the kinetic energy of the um, uh, scattered electron is also zero. That's an elastic scattering event. And then the maximum uh, energy of the scattered uh, electron occurs when the photon is actually backscattered from the target. 
right? And, and uh, you can read off those those values for the maximum energy uh, uh, lost by the electron from this this chart. And of course, all all I'm doing in this chart is I'm plotting uh, this formula right here. So it's no no surprise. Uh, nothing strange is happening. Um, the other type of question you might want to know is, well, what? Okay, so the the scattered electron has a certain kinetic energy, but what velocity might the electron have uh, uh, for that particular kinetic energy? And uh, here, what I'm trying to do is again, I'm trying to remind you what the formula for relativistic uh, kinetic energy is. And the formula for relativistic kinetic energy, this is an equation we derived in the previous lecture, is this gamma minus one times uh, the rest mass energy of the electron, m sub e, times c squared. So I, I just set the kinetic energy of the electron equal to this relativistic expression for kinetic energy. And the, the uh, game I'm going to play is I want to calculate gamma, because gamma is going to then tell me um, what the, the ratio of the velocity of the electron is after scattering uh, compared to the speed of light. So gamma contains this quantity v squared over c squared. So if I can calculate gamma, I can cer certainly calculate the velocity uh, uh, that the electron acquires. So uh, again, it's uh, just algebra. It's a pretty simple uh, uh, set of steps to go from this equation down to this equation, right? And uh, then I just evaluate this equation to find out what gamma is. So I have to pick a particular set of circumstances. Uh, just to pick something, I say uh, recoiling electron um, um, uh, is produced by a 124 kilo electron volt photon. So we've got an incident photon energy of 124 keV. And that 124 keV photon is scattered through a 90 degree angle when it interacts with a target. So my, my uh, scattering angle is going to be equal to 90 degrees because I got to put something in here, right, uh, to evaluate, uh, to take into account the fact that the uh, uh, photon is scattered, right? The, the incident photon energy uh, uh, factors into this parameter alpha. The rest mass energy of, uh, of an electron is, of course, 0.511 million electron volts. So this, this quantity is known, right? The uh, HF1 is the 124 keV uh, photon energy. So I just evaluate the formulas. Um, again, you can check my arithmetic. It's not too complicated. But at the end of the day, I find out that this, um, this electron is going to acquire a velocity of about 0.3 times the speed of light after it interacts with this photon and after the photon is scattered through 90 degrees. So again, it's just an example. Um, and it, 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 what it's designed to do is it, it's, it's trying to convince you that you've got to use the relativistic uh, expressions for kinetic energy uh, when you uh, discuss Compton scattering. Uh, now granted, this velocity uh, isn't uh, approaching the speed of light. It's about one third the speed of light. Uh, but uh, the velocities of the scattered electrons can get much higher as the incident photon energy increases or as the scattering angle also increases. So uh, to be safe, to be safe, you have to use the relativistic expression uh, for uh, kinetic energy. Uh, it's a fair question what the physical significance of the Compton wavelength is. We mentioned this briefly during the first week of the semester, but now we can come back and we can certainly appreciate it, right? Because we've got an expression for the Compton wavelength in terms of the rest mass energy of the particle off of which this photon scatters, right? So in our case, the rest mass energy is going to be the rest mass energy of a, or the rest mass is going to be the rest mass of an electron. And uh, it's a pretty simple uh, 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 step in algebra to manipulate this equation. And what you find out is that uh, one over this Compton wavelength gives you a photon energy, HF, which is precisely equal to the rest mass energy of the particle from which the photon is scattering. So if the photon scatters from an electron, 
then the rest mass energy of the electron uh, is this 0.511 MeV, and that's got to be equal to the photon energy, uh, right? And that defines, it turns out that defines the Compton wavelength, that, that, that equality. So, um, um, uh, the, the discussion is interesting. Okay, this discussion is interesting because it allows you to ask the question, what is the smallest possible wavelength for an electromagnetic wave? Um, that's, a, of course, a fundamental question that's of considerable interest, and, and the issue is, uh, can you continue to make electromagnetic waves of shorter and shorter wavelengths? And the answer is, well, there's, there's no hard answer to this question, right? But this, this discussion about the physical significance of the Compton wavelength gives you some insight. And it turns out that experimentally, if you, if you produce photons with wavelengths smaller, right? Smaller than this Compton wavelength, uh, these photons tend to decay or split into what are called electron positron pairs. Now, this doesn't happen uh, very quickly, but if you let the photon travel through interstellar space uh, over huge distances, uh, there's a certain probability that a photon with a wavelength smaller than the Compton wavelength will disintegrate and uh, produce electron-positron pairs. So we'll talk a little bit more about the, the positrons in the, in the next lecture, uh, right? But um, yeah, this discussion does, does uh, is useful. It's, re it's useful to qualitatively answer the question, is there a lower limit uh, on the wavelength of electromagnetic waves? And the answer is there's not a hard limit, but uh, things, interesting things start to happen with photons that become more energetic um, than the rest mass energy of, let's say, an electron. So um, that's all I wanted to say about Compton scattering. It's more of a review, and it tries to give you some sense of how these relativistic uh, kinematic equations are, are, are used. Um, what we're going to do in the next lecture is we're going to ask uh, uh, what topics should we consider for the remainder of the semester. We've basically worked our way through a sequence of uh, different topics, and we're at the threshold now of some more advanced topics that uh, we can discuss. And uh, so when you come back and listen to uh, the next lecture, um, I'll, I'll present a few options for topics uh, uh, of discussion for the remainder of the semester. We're going to select one and then we'll uh, proceed with that topic uh, in the following lectures. So thanks for listening to this one and, and uh, come back and listen to the, uh, to the next lecture because I think you'll find it interesting.